down on the river, you can see there's a few swallows around. This might be the first bank swallows. In fact, I think I should go check it out. I don't know really what that means or which swallow species exactly it's supposed to refer to or whether it's just a generic term for them. So we're starting to, uh, I've got a, um, I've got a grad student working with the elders it's using Sikhsikabansi as a uh, as a suffix in developing new names for the uh, for the swallows. Yeah, there's not a lot of them yet a few out here, but they're here. And my suspicion is that they are tree swallows, not bank swallows. But I want to see if I can get a glimmer of, uh... oh yes, I got a glimmer of blue on the back. So these are tree swallows. I know you probably can't even see them here on the Right there. I see them going down right to the water. So these are these are the tree swallows. And that's what I expected the first ones usually to show here are the tree, tree swallows. They got the fluted tail, they got the blue on the back, and there's just a few of them, but if they're here now, it won't be long before we got, you know, hundreds of them. And then the bank swallows should show up too. Yeah, they're just so fast, it's, it's, it's really uh, not something I can catch with this camera very easily, unless there's lots of them and they're swarming right, right b beside me, but these ones are not. I'm going to try to zoom in on this guy. This is one of the uh, resident insects that I see every year during Sa'aki, some I teach my students to look out for it, just as another phenological sign. This is called a hoverfly. Actually, there's, there's a lot of species, I guess, of hoverfly, but this is the one we got here. It comes out this time of year. So you see them... You see them moving along the... Uh, along the uh, forest floor and on the pads and these kind of things. I just got done um, picking and eating a rosette of uh, dandelions. Um, they are definitely, you know, starting to come out and getting to the point where um, they're going to be pickable. And so, uh, won't be long now and I'm going to do gathering of dandelions. Check out these cottonwood buds. They're just about to pop out into flower. They're just opening up. So I would say by next week here we should have a bunch of dangling uh, 
cottonwood and poplar flowers. Yeah, all of these buds are just opening up. Taking a look out here. Old man. This is one of the places where there's always lots of geese nests or goose nests. I'm sure already there's some. There's a gander looking tall over there. And there's usually a couple, and I'm sure that's him. His wife is probably laid down over there. Maybe I'll go around and see if I can get another angle. And uh, yeah, they, they put their nest in that same end every year. I see other couples who are, uh, you know, just hanging out on the bank. So. They're probably just cashing eggs yet. I see a lone guy here. So his wife is probably sitting on eggs. Um, I don't really need to go out there to be sure that uh, there's egg business going on because um, I already know there is. Mahoney and I went out and gathered eggs a couple of days ago. Uh, check this out. Totally eaten by a northern flicker, I'm sure. Go around to this other angle. There's the gander. His goose must be out there. Not seeing her though. She's pretty camouflage. I'm gonna. Uh, it might. She might be like right at his feet there. I'm gonna pull out my binoculars and have a better look. Yeah, looking with binoculars, it actually seems that there's something wrong over there. There is a nest right at the foot of that goose, but I can see the. Um, I can see at least one of the eggs. And I can see that there's down, downy feather floating around. That might be that his, his goose is out eating. Yeah, in fact, this might be her coming back. Nope. Somebody just flew past. Maybe that's her standing up. Maybe that's her gander that flew over there. She's not taking good care of her eggs, so her eggs are just sitting there exposed. And the downy feathers that are supposed to line the nest are in real danger of flying away. Last two years, her nest hasn't worked. The year before it did, so not quite sure what's going on there. Here's her gander. He flew over when he heard me start um, talking and he's all pissed off because there's some other geese down here along the shore. He's going to blame them for me being obnoxious and noisy. He's chasing everybody off and she is back there still at the nest. 
where if she's cashing eggs, she shouldn't have pulled out her downy feathers already. Once those downy feathers are out, that's incubation time. But what's she doing just standing around? The water's... Whoa. Pretty windy. The water's very high this year. Normally there's a big island right here too. I bet if I waded out there this year it's going to be chest deep. Well, it looks like she maybe sat down again. Now she's sitting down, but she's not on her nest. It's a few feet away from it. Might be that a predator like a gull, ring-billed gull, might have already got to her nest. And that uh, she's just grieving right now, sitting next to it, not ready to uh, give it up yet. Yeah, ring-billed gulls, like you or I, or I presume uh, most, if not all, animals, have a pretty good memory for where they got um, food in the past, or where they got some kind of reward, where they got some kind of benefit. And the thing about the geese is, like I said, they'll nest, like many birds, in the same place every year. And so if there is a, a ring-billed gull who got to eat that nest last year, which there was, I mean something happened to the nest last year, uh, then, then uh, it wouldn't be surprising to me if that same gull returned there this year. And of course, you know, he's not going to be able to get at the nest when the mama's sitting there, but the mama can't sit there all the time, she's got to go eat sometime. And the ones from the island, I think a lot of times they'll come way over here to the golf greens out of sight of their nest to go eat. So even though they're gone very briefly, if a gull is uh, watching because he's got nothing better to do but wait for a meal, then uh, her eggs are going to get eaten. Here I'm checking on another, another uh, potential harvest for the near future. This is one of our patches of uh, very productive asparagus and just looking to see if there's any shoots popping out yet. They should be coming here um, before long. But yeah, there's nothing, there's nothing coming out yet. But they will be coming out uh, pretty soon. Pretty soon. So, usually it's shortly after I get shortly after I get our eggs um, sometimes while I'm still looking for goose eggs that the asparagus starts coming out so I'm expecting it any time now yeah so I'm back to the vehicle and that's a wrap for uh, for this excursion so it's neat to see what all was happening of course we had the um, we had the geese are nesting house finches have returned um, tree swallows have returned the hoverflies are out the morning cloak butterflies are out the painted turtles are out you got some coots are here so hopefully they'll nest here this year uh, there's still some lingering golden eyes and some passing um, buffle heads. Uh, yeah, lots of lots of good stuff going on with the plant communities. The asparagus is not quite out yet, but you do got the uh, mullein coming in. Um, you've got uh, you got the absinthe. 
sprouting out. Um, dandelion sprouting out. Lots of green from you know the under layer of the grass starting to poke out. Um, the um, current bushes are are beginning to uh, open their leaves. Um, the poplars and cottonwoods are like maybe just days, if that, away from uh, shooting out their uh, flower catkins. Um, yeah, lots of stuff. Lots of stuff changing. It's going to start changing even more rapidly here, really quick.